right, y'all should be able to hear me now on IG. As y'all coming in on IG, uh, can y'all hear me now? As y'all coming in, check yourselves in. Tell me uh, where you are checking in from. Tell me your name and where you're checking in from. Shout out to everybody checking in on Facebook. John Castro from Oklahoma. What's going on? Uh, can people hear me now on, can you hear me on Instagram? All right, y'all can hear me on Instagram now. Shout to sales out. Tell me where you're checking in from. We're going to talk about some healthy money mindsets. I just pinned a comment for Work On Your Game Live. That is my live event happening February 3rd and 4th here in Miami. So any of y'all who got, you got money for Christmas or you got money as a, a Christmas gift, then go ahead and use that and get yourselves in here to uh, <laughs> work on your game live. Get your ticket for Work On Your Game Live again, February 3rd and 4th. You want to take your game to the next level next year. I'm talking because this event we do over here is personal and professional development. Uh, we help develop you holistically because you don't want to be building your business and sacrifice your life for that. And you don't want to just build up your life, but then not have anything going on career wise. So we do it all. So over two full days, there's going to be mindset, strategy, systems and execution for your life. You want to get a ton of frameworks. You want to get some stuff to take home with you. You're going to meet some new people. This is going to be an experience. You need to be at work on your game live. So if you haven't gotten your ticket yet, again, Christmas just ended. Or you gave everybody else gifts. Now it's time to give yourself a gift and be at work on your game live in about six weeks here in South Florida. So the topic here today is healthy money mindsets. Let me introduce myself. For those who don't know me, my name is Dre Baldwin. I'm a former nine year pro athlete. I've written 33 books. You see some of them behind me on the shelf. I've done four TEDx talks on the same topics that I talk about all the time. And I created this whole uh, business called Work On Your Game, which is where I take all the stuff that I learned as a pro athlete. It got me to the top 1% as an athlete. And I create a system that translates that stuff from the sports world to the business world. So I take the things that you need to be successful and get the top 1% in one profession. I'm going to show you how to get to the top percentage levels at what you do. And I know how to explain this stuff. So that's what separates me from you know, anybody else who used to play sports and gets into business or whoever else happens to be in business. Period. So again, as y'all are coming in, you can check yourselves in, shout yourselves out in the comment, tell me your name, tell me where you're checking in from. But the topic, healthy money mindsets, I'm going to take a sip of this water and then we're going to get into it. And then after that, I need to go get some lunch because my meal service is on, on vacation right now. So I got to go get food every day, at least this week. It's almost over. Today's Thursday. So let's get into it. Healthy money mindsets. Um, the reason why I'm even talking about this is because I, I mean, I work with people in the business spaces, though. So whether that's events, whether it's coaching, whether it's people who want a career help, I talk to a lot of people every single day. And often we're talking something around the concept of business. And what I've noticed is that a lot of you have very, very, very poor mindsets around the concept of money. And when you have a poor mindset around the concept of money, you are going to chase the money away. It will go in the opposite direction of anyone who has a poor mindset around money and often your poor money mindset is not is not 100 percent your fault because you probably got it from the adults who were around you when you were growing up whether that was an older brother or sister whether it was the adults in your neighborhood whether it was your parents your teachers whoever was around you they influenced you growing up and if they had a poor money mindset then you got one because you didn't have a choice but to be influenced by those people i mean you're supposed to trust these people and they're supposed to be teaching you and if they taught you wrong then you grow up thinking wrong the thing is, though, on the other hand, that once you become aware of this conditioning that you have in your mind, it is still your responsibility. So even if something's not your fault, it's still your responsibility because you had to do something about it. So that's what we're going to talk about here today. And I'm going to give you just three. Uh, this is not going to be this is not an all inclusive list, but just three healthy money mindsets you can start using ASAP to start, especially since we got a new year coming up in what, 72 hours. This would be a great way to open up your new year with a different mentality around money so that how many people who are watching this right now want to make more money next year than you're going to end up making this year. Now, this year is not over. You might make some money. Today's Thursday. So you might make some money on Friday and you can make some money on Saturday. But with a guesstimate of what you think you're going to close the year at, how many people want to make more money next year than you are? Than you got, let's just say to this point this year. I would guess almost everybody. I've never met a person, and again, I, I'm a business coach, so I've never met a person who said, I want to make the same amount of money next year that I made this year. Everybody's trying to get better, at least when they come around my world, because again, this is work on your game. So since you want to make more money, you need to improve your mindset around money, which will lead to your actions, which will lead to the outcomes. Point number one, we're talking healthy money mindsets. First of all, money goes to one place. All right, John said you want to make more. All right, great. 
Money goes to one place. Let me tell you where money goes in life. All right. Any of you want to make money or you've ever made money, let me tell you where it goes. Money goes to where it can find friends and multiply. That's where money goes. It goes where it can multiply. It goes where there is more of it. All right. Money does not like to be isolated and by itself. It's a social creature. All right. So some people, you know, some of you people, maybe you don't like hanging around people all the time. You're more of an introvert. You like being by yourself. Money is the opposite of that. All right. Money likes to be around other money. All right. And you don't have to become an extrovert as a human to make more money. You just got to do things with money that show money that you know how to grow it and build more of it and be a good steward of money. We'll talk about that in a second. Let me tell you where money does not go. And this is one of the poor money mindsets that causes people to not make the kind of money they could make in life. A lot of people believe that in order to make more money, that means you need to be a good person or you need to somehow, some way deserve money. All right, money does not care about whether you're a good person or a bad person. Money does not care if you believe or if your grandma believes or your kids believe or your husband or wife believes that you deserve it because you work so hard or you believe in yourself or you uh, you gave a bunch of money to charity two years ago or you saved uh, a dog from a burning building uh, last week. None of that has anything to do with your ability to make money. Money goes to where it can find friends and where it can multiply. In other words, people who are good with money, good, quote unquote, meaning they know how to grow it. They know how to make more of it and they know how to take a dollar and turn it into two and 10 into 20 into 100. Those people tend to have money come to them. They tend to attract more money because they're doing what money wants. All right. Money does not go to you because you want money to come there. Money goes to you because you're doing what the money wants you to do. So sometimes you may if you ever had a period in your life, I think everyone Many of you probably have a period in your life where the money was just coming in. It was just flowing in very consistently. And maybe you weren't sure exactly what you were doing to cause that to happen. What you were doing, maybe inadvertently, is that you were doing things that grew and multiplied the money. And that's why the money kept coming in. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, Dre, well, if I'm already doing things to grow and multiply the money or money's already coming in, then of course it's going, more is going to come in. Exactly. That's the point. And have you ever heard the saying, the rich get richer? Everybody heard that before, right? The rich get richer. This is why the rich get richer, because they already have tools. They already have strategies. They already have mindsets, most importantly, about get a dollar, turn it into two, turn it into 10, turn it into 20, turn it into 100. They already have this mentality. And because they have this mentality, guess what always happens to them? They always get more money. More money keeps finding its way to people who have a mindset of richness. Richness is not about how much money you have. It's a mindset of richness. Wealth does not exist in uh, the physical form. Wealth exists in the mind. Uh, Robert Allen talked about that in his book called, Robert Allen has a book called Creating Wealth. Any of you who has not read that book, read the book. It is based in the concept of real estate, but it's not about real estate, if you understand what I'm saying. The book is about wealth, and wealth is simply what people want. And when you understand how it works, you can make money uh, as much as you want and as often as you want. What's going on, Shonda, over there on Facebook? So this is the first thing you need to understand. This is the first healthy money mindset. Money goes to where it can find friends and multiply. It does not care if you are a good person. It does not care if you feel like you deserve it. It does not care how hard you work. Money has nothing to do with any of that. Any of you ever known somebody who didn't seem to even be working that hard, but they were they seemed to make a lot of money, even though they worked like half as hard as you did? Of course you have. And if you haven't seen that person, it's because you haven't looked hard enough. But those people exist. Why? Because making money is not about hard work. Even though somebody might try to make you think that money is about hard work, it is not about hard work. You ever know somebody who is a really good person and they you know they do all the right stuff. They go to church every Sunday. They help old ladies cross the street. They you know give of themselves all the time. And yet they still are broke. Anybody know anybody who fits that description? If you don't, then maybe you just haven't looked deep enough. But there are plenty of them. There's a whole lot of them. And the reason why is because money does not go to someone for being a good person. If you think being a good person is going to make you more money, that's a that's false. Now, are there good people who make money? Yes, there are. But that that's not the reason why they make money. They make money because they're following the principle of money. Money is not about good or bad. It's about multiplying. Money does not make moral judgments about your character. And many of us are very superstitious about that. Oh, well, I just got to be a good person. I'm going to make more money. No, you're not. You might make more money and be a good person, but that's not why you made the money. See, this is why we got to get an accurate formula. Any of you ever seen a bad person, somebody who was doing things that you consider to be unscrupulous or bad or just evil or negative, but they still had a lot of money? 
course you did. Remember Enron? Remember Enron years ago when those people were stealing money and a bunch of people lost their like their life savings, their four hundred one ks. They lost a lot of a lot of people lost a lot of stuff because of that scandal with Enron. But guess what? Enron was making a lot of money. Why? Because they were doing things that multiply money. Y'all see the movie The Wolf of Wall Street, Jordan Belfort, and the actor was a uh, Rio DiCaprio. Uh, he was doing something that was technically illegal, but he was making a lot of money, and all the people who worked for him were making a lot of money, even though they were breaking the law. Why? Why were they making a lot of money? Because they were doing things that multiplied money. They were following principles of money growth, which have nothing to do with being good or bad. You can grow money for negative reasons. You grow money for positive reasons. All right. So this is what you have to understand about money. Does any of you ever remember uh, Bernie Madoff? Bernie, I read the book about Bernie Madoff. It was called, um, what was it called? Something of Lies. Web of Lies. Something of Lies. I can't remember what it was called. Something of Lies. But just look up books on Bernie Madoff. It's a really good book. And the whole thing with Bernie Madoff is he was making so much money, he wouldn't even, you know, Bernie Madoff didn't even try to get clients. So he was a, a wealth manager, basically. He just managed people's money. And the Wizard of Lies is what it was called, the Wizard of Lies. And the thing about Bernie Madoff is he had people coming to him, begging him to take their money and manage it because he had shown such a strong track record of growing people's money. And because, and words start getting about like, yo, this dude grew my money. He grew my money. He grew mine. He had such a great track record of growing money, or at least it was showing that he was growing money. More and more people kept giving him money. And the more people gave him money, the more his uh, Ponzi scheme was able to keep going because he was using one person's money to pay the next person's money. So that was the whole thing with Bernie Madoff. The whole thing, the point is he was following the principles of money growth and money creation, or at least it appeared that he did. And he had the whole world thinking that he was, and that's why he was making so much money. So understand that this is the definition of the word steward. All right, being a steward of money. Any of you ever heard that phrase before? Be a good steward of money. You should. Here's what it means. A person who looks after the passengers on a ship, aircraft, or train and brings them meals. That's the that's a steward. So remember, they don't call them this anymore, but on flights, they used to call the women the stewardess, stewardess on the flight. Now they call them flight attendants. So I guess it's sexist to call them a stewardess, whatever. Definition of steward is a person who looks after the passengers. So if you want to make more money, folks, this is the number one thing you need to do is look after the passengers. Who are the passengers? Those are your dollars. Those are your dollars and cents. If you want to make more money, you need to be looking after the money. Everybody got it. Those of you who run a business, you need to be looking at the money all day, every day. I, I run a business every day. One of the first things I look at every single morning is I'm looking at the money. I want to know what sales came in since the last time I looked at the money. I want to know what we have going on that is going to make more money. I want to know what happened if we didn't make more money or not enough. I want to find all of that out. I'm looking at the money all the time. The poet Rebus is the link right there. Work on your game. Life is also the link in my bio. And if those of you on Facebook, that pinned comment is the link to work on your game. Life. So this is the number one thing you got to do. You got to be a steward of money. Again, this is what the word means. You look after the passengers. If you look after the money, you will make more money. So some of you may have been told or maybe you have come up with this mindset of if I just don't pay attention to the money so much, then it'll come in. Maybe I'm just watching it too much. You ever heard the phrase like you don't want to watch the pot boil or something like that? Uh, a watch pot doesn't boil or something like that. All right, that's nonsense. All right. Watch pots do boil because the pot doesn't boil because you're watching it or not watching it. All right, so if anybody ever told you that that's nonsense, garbage, uh, bullshit statement that somebody said because they didn't want to pay attention to something for whatever reason. The reason that the pot boils is because the water gets over 212 degrees Fahrenheit. It will start to boil. I don't care if you watch it or you don't. It will boil if you heat it up hot enough to the right temperature for long enough. The water will boil. All right, it has nothing to do with whether you're watching it or not. All right. So some of these cliches and sayings that you heard from people are complete nonsense because they didn't know what they were talking about. I know what I'm talking about. All right. If you want to make more money, you got to watch the money. You got to be a steward of the money. Point number two the topic. Once again, we're talking healthy money mindsets. You are not responsible for another person's financial situation. Meaning, if you are a salesperson, especially those of you who get to name your price, but all salespeople, it doesn't matter what you sell. If you are in the sales world, there is going to come a time, guarantee, I don't care what you sell. You can sell a $10 product, you can sell a $10,000 product. And I've sold products that cost even more than that. There's going to come a time you're going to be making a offer to someone. And you're going to tell them about the product or service, and then you're going to tell them the price. 
and they are going to give you some form of response or objection or comment that has to do with not having enough money. This is guaranteed to happen. All right, you get in sales for a week. All right, this is going to happen. Somebody's going to make some kind of objection to the money. All right, I give this book, all right, these books behind me, I give away the third day for free. I just tell people cover the shipping, $9.95. I get price objections <laughs> to $9.95. I sell coaching programs that cost in the five figures as far as investments that people need to make to get into my programs. And I get price objections there. So you can get price objections for a dollar. All right. It doesn't matter how much money it is. You will always get people objecting and, or commenting or complaining that they don't have the money to pay for something. Here's my point. Again, you being a steward of money, another person's financial situation is not your problem. So let me explain what this means. This guy named Zig Ziglar, some of you may be familiar with him. He's an old guy. He passed away years ago, but he was a sales trainer. He had a lot of great stuff on selling. Any of you could should look him up. His name is Zig, Z-I-G, Ziglar. Look it up and spell it how it sounds. And he has a, a course that you can go through online on your favorite streaming app, Spotify, Apple. He's on all of those. Is called Secrets of Closing the Sale. It's like a 12 module course and each module is like an hour and a half long. This is like, it shouldn't even be free, honestly. They should be charging people for it because that's how good it is. But look that up and listen to it. One of the things that Zig talks about is he would go around, one of the things that he did, he used to sell pots and pans. He had a job selling cookware. And he was one of the best salespeople in the country selling his cookware. And he would go house to house. He would go to people's houses, sit in their living room, give a sales pitch and sell them a set of pots and pans. This was a real business that he did. This is way before the internet. And one of the things Zig would talk about is how sometimes he would sit in somebody's house and he would make them the pitch and they would like the pots and pans because it was a great product. And he would tell them the price and they would say, well, we can't afford it. We don't have any money. We're broke. We got to pay for this. We got to pay for that. We got all these bills we're behind on. And they would start going into the whole story of why they can't afford stuff. And any of you, again, any of you get in sales, you will get this. All right. Again, I get the story. When I ask somebody to pay $9, I get the story. When I ask somebody for $10,000, I get the story. All right. You get the story no matter how much you ask for. All right. You're going to get the story sometimes from some people that they don't have money. Them not having money has nothing to do with you. Which means, and let me follow up because I want you, I want you to get this point because you're in sales. Somebody tells you that they got this bill and that bill and this thing and that thing. Guess what they didn't say? They didn't say, no, I won't buy it. They just said that they ain't got a lot of money. You are still responsible for closing that sale. This is the healthy money mindset. Yes, this is a healthy money mindset. So if I'm talking to somebody and they say, Dre, we want you to come speak at our conference. And I say, well, you got to pay me $20,000 to come speak at your conference. And they say, well, you know, we don't um, have a big budget and we're a small organization. And, you know, we go off, uh, we run our, our things off donations and then this and that. And they start telling me all the story. Uh, here's what they didn't say. They didn't say we won't pay you. They just started giving me the story. They didn't say no. They didn't hang up. So it's still my job to close them and get that money. Now, maybe we can negotiate, maybe we can work something out, but it's still my job to get the money. Why? Because I'm in the business of getting paid for what I do. So if I don't close that deal and get paid for what I do, then what am I doing? I am not, I am not honoring my business. I'm not showing respect to my own business. I'm not being a good steward of money because money was right there in front of me. All I had to do was close the deal and get the money, but I capitulated to their story and I didn't steward the money the right way. So what did I just do? I just chased the money away. So money's going to say, okay, Dre clearly is not serious about us. So you know, we're going to go find somebody who will close the deal. And they're going to get on the phone with another speaker, and that speaker's going to give them a price, and they're going to get the same story to that speaker, and that speaker's going to go right over top of that story and close the deal and get the money that should have been my money because I'm buying into their story. Another person's story about not having money is not the same as them saying, I'm not buying it. They just said they, they ain't got a lot of money. Okay, all right, you ain't got a lot of money. All right, you didn't have a lot of money yesterday. You're not going to have a lot of money tomorrow. So that has nothing to do with you buying something from me right now. Now, I'm not going to say that to them, but that's what I'm thinking. And again, what's the topic here? Healthy money mindsets. My mindset around money is I'm in the business of exchanging my goods and services for your money. All right. That's the business that we're in. OK, so if I have a good or service that you want and it's valuable and I've explained it to you and you understand the value of it and I tell you the price, the fact that you don't have a lot of money doesn't mean that you can't buy it. It doesn't mean that you won't buy it. And it is my responsibility to make sure that you do buy it because my product or service is going to help you more than holding on to your money is going to help you. That's my mindset. And as a salesperson, that's what I'm supposed to do. 
Everybody following me? So that's what it means to that's what it means to be a good steward of money. Remember what that word steward means, and that's steward uh, with a D on the end, John, over there on Facebook. Steward, like a stewardess, good steward of money. And again, the steward is a person who looks after the passengers. Your passengers are the money. All right, don't let you don't let the money walk away. All right, it, when it, you're on a plane and a little seatbelt sign comes on, right, the light that says "fasten your seatbelts" and the air the the pilot comes on and says, hey, we're experiencing a little bit of turbulence. Everybody fasten the seatbelts. If you try to get up and go to the bathroom after they and when that light comes on, what's the what's the stewardess or the flight attendant going to do? They're going to walk up to you and say, excuse me, sir. Excuse me, ma'am. Could you please stay seated with your seatbelts on while we're experiencing turbulence? As soon as the turbulence is over, you can get up and you can go to the bathroom. That happens, right? Why? Because the stewardess's job is to look after the passengers. All right. That's your job. So if you notice money. Is about to walk away from you, but it is available and you don't do anything and you let it walk away. You are not doing your job as a flight attendant. You're not doing your job as a steward. You're letting the money walk away. You're disrespecting the money. So the money's going to say, okay, you going to disrespect me. All right, what if a, a flight attendant disrespects you on a plane? What you going to do? You're going to get home. You're going to call United or Delta or American Airlines and you're going to complain, right? You're going to, or you're going to post it on Twitter and you're going to complain that the flight attendant didn't do their job the right way. That's what money does to you. It complains, oh, but you didn't do your job the right way. Uh, Shonda and John didn't do their job the right way. They clearly are not interested in me. So you know what? We're not spending any more time with them. Isn't that what happens? You have a bad experience at a business. What do you do? You stop spending money at that business. All right? This is a, this is a direct parallel, folks. I told you I know what I'm doing. I told you I'm good at what I do. All right, y'all need, need to be at this event. Work on your game live. This is I'm giving y'all this for free. Come to work on your game live if you like what I'm doing right now. All right, this is just off the top. We come to work on your game live. This two full days, we're gonna be going over all kinds of stuff like this. But I'm not even finished. So you cannot allow, you cannot allow a person's story or their situation of claiming that they don't have money or whatever it is guilt you into not getting the money. Because again, whether you sold something to them or not, if you let's say you had never come around that day, guess what? They still be in the same situation. All right, you didn't make them not have money. Now, everything that they did up to this point in their lives got them to the point today that they don't have money. And tomorrow, guess what? They're probably still not going to have money. That ain't got nothing to do with you. You didn't make them not have money. That's their life got them to that point. But that has nothing to do with the fact that your product or service can help them more than holding on to their money will help them. Because guess what? They ain't good at holding on to money anyway. That's how they got to the point they ain't got no money. So guess, guess why that person doesn't have a lot of money? You know why? Because they probably buy things. All right. So guess what you should do, salesperson? Sell something. All right. This is the healthy money mindset. Everybody follow what I'm saying here. All right. This is how people get to the point that they don't always have a lot of money because they buy stuff, especially in the United States. Everybody here, anybody here who's from the United States, all right, you understand. All right. This is what we do here. This is a this is a culture of consumerism. What what holiday did we just pass? All right. More money gets spent for this holiday that is supposed to be about honoring. It's supposed to be about honoring uh, Jesus and a religion. We turned it into a holiday about buying stuff. All right, that's what we do here in America. We spend money. So if you are a salesperson, it is your job to let people do what they like to do, which is buy stuff, sell them something. It is not your business that they don't have money. All right, they their actions lead them to not having money. So if you just let them do what they naturally do, which is spend stuff, then they'll keep doing it because that's what they want to do. If they want to do something different, they wouldn't be sitting down talking to you in the first place. By the way, those of you came in the middle here, my next event, Work On Your Game Live, February 3rd and 4th, you get your ticket at that link. Work On Your Game Live is pinned on Facebook. If you're on Instagram, it's my pinned comment, and there's also the link in my bio. So this person who you're talking to will still not have money, whether you sell them something or not. All right, so offering them a discount is not going to help them, is not going to help you, is not going to change their situation. So, if, And if what you're selling has true value and they know that it has value. The best thing that you can do, the best thing that you can do is get them to invest full price in what they're selling. That's the best thing you can do is get them to invest full price, whatever the full price happens to be. Because again, you're going to get the story, whether you're selling something that costs $5 or something that costs uh, 50000 you're going to get a story at some point from somebody talking about how they don't have money. All right. So that has nothing to do with you. That is not your business. All right. Letting them off the hook. That's your business walking away from you. Because they're going to spend that money. Again, that's how they got to the point of not having money because they spend money. Point number three. We are talking here about healthy money mindsets. Point number three. There's this misunderstood saying out there that 
someone misquoted the Bible that says money is the root of all evil. Has any of you heard that before? I'm sure a bunch of you have heard it before. Some of you probably have said it before. Well, let's correct the statement. The actual quote is the love of money is the root of all evil. That's the correct statement. Money itself or even the pursuit of money is not evil. It's just that you don't want to become a slave to your money and put it above everything else in your life. A slave to being a slave to the money means the money is telling you what to do rather than you telling the money what to do. Remember that you are a steward of money, meaning you are looking after the passenger. It's kind of like if you're a parent or if you're a babysitter, what do you do? You look after the kids. All right. The kids don't look after you. You look after the kids. So the money shouldn't be stewarding you. You should be stewarding the money. All right. You control the money. Money is submissive to a person who has a healthy money mindset. Everybody get what I'm saying here? If you step up and lead, the money will follow. But you got to step up and lead and you got to get your uh, unhealthy money mindsets that are slowing you down. What's going on, Jeremiah, over there on uh, Facebook? You got to get those unhealthy money mindsets out of your head. John, you loving this, then I should see your I should see you on a list of registrants for work on your game live. If you loving this, like this is nothing compared to what you're gonna get at work on your game live. So it's just that you don't again, don't be a slave to the money. Don't that doesn't mean you that means don't just go do anything for money. You need to control what you're doing for money and understand that there are ways to there are a million and one ways to make money, a million and one ways to earn money and multiply money and grow money. And this is something that everybody should be studying. If you want to make more money, you should be studying money. All right. Not studying uh, your favorite rapper's new mixtape, not studying some uh, influencers uh, beefing with each other in the comment section. Whatever you want to be great at in 2023, you need to be putting a study to it. I mean, you need to be investing your time, your money, your attention, your energy and your focus into that thing. You want to build a bigger business next year. You need to be investing in how do I build a big business? Who knows how to do it? Who can give me the information? Who can give me the insights? What am I missing? What do I not know? Because if you don't have what you want right now in life, there's something that you don't know and or something that you are not applying. Right? You might know it, but you're not doing it. So that's the challenge. So we got to do something about that. So all right, money is not a negative thing. Again, money is not the root of all evil. It's the love of money, not the money itself, because everybody needs and uses money. All right, you need money for what? Food, clothing, shelter. All right. All of you are on the Internet right now. Is that Internet free? Some of you may be somewhere where you can use the Internet for free, but you got a phone. Most of you have a data plan on your phone. Is that phone, that data plan free? Most of you are watching me on a computer or on a smartphone. Was that free? No. All right. So we need money to get these things. All right. Any of you going to eat today? Like breakfast, lunch, dinner? OK, that costs money, right? That ain't free, is it? Unless you're growing it on a in a garden at your and you got a, a garden in the back of your house. Most of you don't. So. Uh, money is needed. All right. Again, there's nothing wrong with having money. There's nothing wrong with having a lot of money. And it does not make you more virtuous than another person if you have less money. Being poor or broke are not virtues. So again, that's another one that people have gotten from certain religions that people start to think, well, I'm poor or broke or you know, I gave everything I have and I ain't got nothing for myself that makes you somehow virtuous or better than a person who has a lot of money. That's false. You're as actually the opposite. Right? Because if you're not multiplying, you're not being prosperous and growing, then you're actually going against the word of what your higher being, whoever it is, told you. Because in every religious text says prosper, grow, be fruitful, be great, have as much as you want, have abundance. So if you don't have anything, you're doing the opposite of what your higher being told you. You can consult your own religious text or whatever religion you happen to be or your your spiritual leader and let them cosign what I just said. So if you have it stuck in your mind that having money is somehow sacrilegious or evil or negative, you got to get that out of your head ASAP because that's the very thing that's keeping you from making it. Let me say that again. If you have it in your head or it was taught to you, maybe by some broke people around you, some people who raised you, that having money is somehow sacrilegious, negative, or it's just some or evil in some way and making more money makes you a worse person or being rich people are somehow uh, they just use everybody else or any of that negative garbage that you have been taught by broke people with broke mindsets. First of all, you need to stop hanging with those people. Stop talking to them. Stop uh, listening to them. Stop reading what they write. Stop liking their posts. Whatever it is that they're doing to influence you, stop, uh, stop allowing that to happen. All right. Get those people out of your life. Anybody with a broke, poor mindset, you need to get away from as quickly as possible because their mindset will drag you down quicker than what I'm telling you here will pull them up. Negativity spreads faster than positivity. So you got to get the negative people away, especially negative mindsets about money 
assuming that most of you want to make more money next year than you made this year. You got to get those people out of your life ASAP, like ASAP, because they will drag you down. They will keep you broke. They will keep you poor. And whatever they're thinking, you're going to be thinking. This is a simple law of association. You become the average of the people you spend the most time with. It doesn't matter how many it is. It don't have to be five. It could be one. It could be 10. It could be three. It could be 30. Whoever you're spending time with, you will think how they think. So here's what you need to do. Who is talking about or has or has shown you in whatever way, shape, or form that they have a healthy mindset about money? Now, how would you know what's a healthy mindset about money? I just gave it to you. I just told you. I just spent the last 30 minutes telling you. And just listen to people talk about money. Do you hear people talk about it in a negative way? Do you hear people talk about money as, and they associate it with fear or a lack or wanting or something negative? Or they talk about people who have money as if those people are somehow bad in some way. Those people, get away from them. Get them out of your life. Even if they're your own family members, you can still say hi and bye. But you shouldn't be spending a lot of time with those people because what they think, again, will infect you. If you want to get anything in life, you need to get around people who are already thinking about doing and living the stuff that you want. So any of you who wants to make more money, if this sounds like it makes sense to you, it might be the first time you ever heard anything like this. All right, there's a reason for that. There's a reason why you're here today listening to this right now and all the other stuff that you could be doing on the internet, on your phone, all the other people you could be listening to. There's a reason why you're getting this message right now. There's something that you needed to hear today, something that you needed to see, some insight that you needed to get. And your next step is being at my event in six weeks here in Miami, February 3rd and 4th. Again, the link is workonyourgame.live. That's where you need to be. This is the event where if you like this, we're going to be going deeper. It's not all about, the whole event is not all about money, but oh, we will be talking about money because this is a business and personal growth event. We're going to be talking about both. Mindset, strategy, systems, execution. We're going to be talking about all of that for two days uh, in six weeks here in Miami. Again, that's workonyourgame.live. So if you have it stuck in your mind that money is negative, recondition yourself, unlearn that mindset because that mindset that money is bad or wanting money is bad or uh, trying to make more money is bad or charging people a lot of money for something is bad. If you have thought that, if you have even one ounce of you thinking that, you need to fix that. Like That's like a five alarm emergency that you need to fix ASAP because that is the very thing that's keeping the money away from you is a negative mindset around money will keep money away from you more than anything else. You can be the dumbest person in the world. If you got a healthy money mindset, you can make money. Right, and if you ever seen somebody who didn't seem that smart, they didn't seem that intelligent or even that good at what they did, but they were making money. And you're like, how is this person making money? I know I'm smarter than this person. How are you making more money than me? What I just explained to you over the last 30 minutes, that's how. Has any, any of you ever felt like that? Especially, this is especially um, normal to see in people who are highly educated. So college graduates, uh, PhDs, uh, people with advanced degrees, like you got more than a four-year degree. You tend to see this all the time. They're like, how am I this smart? And I got all these degrees and I got all this education. Yet this person who has less than me in terms of education is making more money than me. How is that possible? And they're not working as hard or another one is hard work. This person doesn't seem to work as hard as me. How are they making more money than me or whatever you're offering? They're, this person's product is not as good as mine. How are they making more money than me? It's because of this. These three things that I just said. So let me go over these three points. Anybody got a question? Put it in the comments. So I'm going to go over the three points right here. Healthy money mindsets. Number one. Money goes to where it can find friends and multiply. It does not care if you're a good person or a bad person. It does not care if you feel like you deserve it. None of those have anything to do with how much money you make. Zero. Zero. You being a good person will not make you money. You can be a good person if you want to be, but that's not the reason why you make money. Bad people make money too. All right, you are a steward of money. Steward means a person who looks after the passengers. If you look after the money, you will make more money. So number one money concept is watch the damn money. If you want to make more money, pay more attention to it. Number two, you are not responsible for another person's financial situation. So as a salesperson, you are going to get someone telling you that they don't have a lot of money when you tell them the price of your product. But let me tell you what they didn't say. They didn't say they're not going to buy it. They didn't say they can't buy it. They just said they don't have a lot of money because they're giving you the story to try to guilt and shame you into lowering your price. Don't fall for it. If you do that, then you are not stewarding your money the right way. You are chasing away the money every time you discount your product in order to appease someone because they claim that they don't have money. Well, guess how they got to the point of not having money because they buy stuff and you're a salesperson. Guess what your job is? Get them to buy something. All right. That is your job as a salesperson. If you don't do your job as a salesperson, you are disrespecting your own business. And when you, if you disrespect your business, the then you are disrespecting the money. And if you disrespect the money, the money will find somewhere else to go. 
Same way that if you get disrespected as a customer at a business, what do you do? You stop spending money at that business. The money does the exact same thing. The number one obligation of a business owner is to create profit for the shareholders. If you are a solopreneur, you are the lone shareholder. It is your job to create profit, i.e. make money. So if someone shames or guilts you into lowering your price, you are disrespecting your own business. And if you were a CEO of a company, a publicly held company, and they found out that you did that, they would have a meeting and vote your ass out of there because you're not doing what you're supposed to do as a CEO of a business. And all of you as a CEO of your own life, it is your job to get the money. It is not your job to capitulate to somebody else's sob story about not having it. Number three, there's a misunderstood saying that money is the root of all evil. No, it's the love of money is the root of all evil. All right, money provides food, clothing, shelter, Everybody in here, I ask, who wants to make more money next year than you made last year? I think everybody's nodding their head. I never met a person who said, Dre, I want to make the same amount that I made this year. I want to make less. No, Dre, I got too much. Dre, I want to make less money next year. I've never heard a person say that. And I work with people who are at, I've talked to people. Let me not say work with, now I haven't worked with all of them. I've talked to people who are making $35,000 a year. I've talked to people who are making seven and eight figures a year. I've never had a person tell me that they want to make the same amount or less next year. Everybody wants to make more money, no matter how much they got. Everybody wants to make more. So money is not the root of all evil. And most of the people I work with are good people. I don't work with jerks or assholes or bad people. And I've worked with a lot of people. I've been in the game for a while. So if you think making more money or having more money is somehow sacrilegious, evil, or negative in any way, you must extirpate these thoughts out of your head as soon as possible because they are the very things that are pushing the money away from you. And let me say that one more time. I, anybody got a question or comment, put it in the comment section. I'm going to answer a couple questions. Let me wrap this up. I got to go get lunch and I got to call at 12 o'clock. So if you believe that having money or making more money is in any way negative, evil or sacrilegious, you must immediately you need to, like this is you need to drop everything, cancel all your appointments for the rest of the day. and You need to fix this like yesterday because this mindset will keep all the money away from you forever. This mindset will keep you broke. And any of you who has ever been taught at wherever place you go to worship that being poor or not having money is somehow virtuous or makes you better than other people who have money. That is nonsense or that uh, rich people are somehow bad because they have more money or that they take advantage of people who don't have money. That is also nonsense. I just gave you the money mindsets. I just told you. All right. So there should not be any confusion with all of this, with all of this being said. Any advice for marketing a clothing brand? King is Gene, get a ticket to work on your game live. That's my advice. Get your ticket to work on your game live. If you're serious about building a business, then you got to actually put some investment into your business. So you can't just start a business, um, not you know, putting, any, putting anything, put some skin in the game. Let's put it like that. Relentless Wealth said, this was confirmation for me. I'm moving in the right direction. Thanks so much. Well, I appreciate you. Thank you for coming in here. And I like that screen name. I like that, that name, Relentless Wealth. I like that. Your type, your name at least says, I think you got the right mindset around the money. So let me tell y'all one more time. And then we got to wrap this up because I do need to eat. Kelly Tanya, what's going on? I'm going to be on Kelly's show very soon. We're going to make that happen real soon. Appreciate you, Kelly. And my next event, Work On Your Game Live, is happening February 3rd and 4th. It is here in Miami, Florida. It is in person. There is no, um, what do they call it? Virtual? No, it's not virtual. We are serious, are in person. Are You need to be in the room. February 3rd and 4th. Miami, Florida is going to be 80 degrees and sunny out here for two full days. If you want an excuse to come to Miami, you want to write this off on your taxes as a business expense. You want to tell your boss. If any of you need to give a story to your boss, send me a DM. I'll tell you what to tell your boss about coming here and you might even get the company to pay for it. Get your boss to come too. All right. Work on your game. Dot live is where you get your ticket. Again, work on your game. Dot live is where you get your ticket. That's the link in my bio on Instagram. And it's the pinned comment here on Facebook. I will put this video up on on YouTube as well. So any of you want to rewatch it, you can put the speed, you can uh, take the speed up. Uh, this is not a virtual event of Relentless Wealth. This is an in-person event, but I probably will sell the recordings. I sell the recordings of the event afterwards, but they will be sold. I'm not a big fan of virtual events, honestly. I like being in a room. So I'm going to be in a room at like five, probably five different events in 2023, not counting my own at other people's events. Uh, King is John. If you don't know what I mean when I say investing, you ain't ready to start a business, uh, just to be honest with you. Uh, so you should go uh, Google that. But this event, February 3rd and 4th, Miami, Florida, get your ticket at work on your game dot live. The tickets are going to be available for about we got about three more weeks before we close off the ticket sales. Again, work on your game dot live. You have a question about anything about the event. 
the FAQ on the page answers all questions about the dates, about the locations, all of that stuff is answered there. We're going to be announcing the venue probably in the next, probably the next seven to 14 days. We'll be announcing the venue. We're just in negotiation trying to find the right venue for this. I got an idea of what it's going to be, but I'll let everybody know that it's going to be in Miami. Just know Miami. If you're going to fly in, fly to Miami. All right. You can book a hotel. You can cancel the reservation. If it's, if we change the location, wherever it's going to be, you don't have to pay money anyway. Anyway, so everybody got that. So that's work on your game. Dot lives where you get your ticket. I need to get lunch. I, I can sit here and talk to y'all all day, but I do need to eat. <laughs> I do need to eat so I can keep doing my work and I can keep doing what I got to do to make money. I need food. I need fuel in my tank. So everybody, questions, comments, put them in the comment section. Text me at my number 305-384-6894. Any of you got uh, questions about anything or you want to share with me something that you got from here that was good for you. That's my daily motivation text line. 305-384-6894 is where you can send those texts. Uh, question is from, I got a question over on Facebook. Question on Facebook is, which book do I suggest that you read first? Uh, when it comes to uh, my insights around money, uh, I would say Think and Grow Rich. That's fine. Nothing wrong with Think and Grow Rich. I mean, it's a great book, but I, I would start there. But there's a lot of books when it comes to the mindset of money. Uh, King is John. You need marketing advice. Yeah, marketing is how you actually sell things, sir. Uh, marketing is how you let people know you have something, and then sales is the exchange. So that's the whole point. You need marketing advice. You need to invest in it. That's the whole point. You have to pay to get knowledge from people who know things that you don't know. So does that answer your question? All right, everybody, we wrapping this one up. Everybody have a great uh, Thursday. I might do another live before the end of the year, but I might not. Y'all stay tuned. Y'all know where to find me, workonyourgame.live. That's the next thing I want to hear from all of y'all is you got your tickets to my event. Work on your game. We are out of here. Everybody have a great Thursday.